This video is called The Abolitionists, and we're going to be looking at how opinions on slavery began to change. So the story of this of the abolitionists really starts before they were even around. And that was in the 1700s. People in the 1700s into the early 1800s, they really didn't care much about slavery. It really didn't bother them at all. In fact, people didn't even really think much about it. It was just sort of the way things were. Um, many people think that slavery was only a southern thing, but the North and the South, all around the United States, both all regions had slaves up until about the mid-1800s. The Constitutional Convention did not attempt to stop slavery at all. In fact, there wasn't even discussion about stopping slavery in 1787 when the Constitutional Convention met. There was, however, an attempt to stop the slave trade, and that did stop in 1808 because of the Constitutional Convention. But you think about this country starting a new government, they didn't even talk about stopping slavery. It wasn't even an issue people brought up. That just goes to show you um, how little people cared about slavery in the late 1700s. Um, there were a few people that, that, that did speak out against it as, far, as long as slavery has gone back. Even in the 1600s and 1700s, there was always a couple people that would um, make some noise about it. But for the most part, slavery was part of life. It was not a big deal. That, however, would begin to change um, with the abolitionists, a group of people that were going to start fighting to stop slavery. And in this video, we're going to be looking at four of them. The first abolitionist who really dedicated his life to stopping slavery was a man named William Lloyd Garrison. He created a newspaper. His newspaper was called The Liberator. You see here's the little icon that was at the top of his paper. And he began this newspaper in 1831, before uh, people were really starting to discuss slavery a lot. It was in Boston, and The Liberator was a little bit different because he called for the complete abolition of slaves, no slavery at all. And that was pretty radical back then. Some people that, that didn't want slavery to expand into the West Garrison wanted to get rid of it altogether. He published essays and other writings. Um, in his newspaper, he would talk all these bad things about slavery. His newspaper was widely circulated around the country. It was one of the more popular newspapers in the United States. And because of Garrison's work, um, many more people became informed about how bad slavery was, and many more people started to talk about slavery. He was really the person that started to spread the message. Another abolitionist that you probably have heard of before is a woman named Harriet Tubman. She was born a slave, and she escaped um, to Philadelphia in 1849. And then during the time after she escaped, she joined up with other abolitionists and was actually so active in trying to end slavery that she assisted other slaves in running away through the Underground Railroad, which is like a secret um, network of people that were against slavery to help run away slaves. Tubman made 13, 13 trips back into the South. Um, so she, if she were caught, she could be killed. There was actually a huge bounty put on her head. But she went back 13 times and saved over 70 slaves. We're not really sure. There's some numbers have it closer to 100. Um, because of her work, people called her Moses. Um, it's just a biblical reference to Moses who saved his people. Um, and Tubman, people say, saved her people. Um, she, even after the, the Civil War began and slavery was starting to end, she became a Union spy in the Civil War, and then she even joined in women's rights after her time. So she was very instrumental in ending slavery. Another abolitionist that we'll be studying is a man named Frederick Douglass. Again, he was also a uh, runaway slave. He escaped using fake paperwork and escaped into the North on a train. He was taught to read and write. Uh, by his owner's wife throughout his life. And after escaping, he devoted his life to trying to end slavery and actually equality of all people. So it wasn't just slavery, he even spoke um, trying to get women the right to vote as well. The main part about Douglas's work as an abolitionist is he did two things. He wrote a awesome best-selling autobiography about his life, which he talked about being a slave. And he talked about how bad it was and about what happened to him and how he was beaten and how he was treated so terribly. And when people read that, they started to get mad and want to stop slavery. But the most important thing Douglas did was his skills as a speaker. He was an excellent, excellent speaker, and he would travel the country giving speeches about slavery and about how it was wrong, and he convinced many, many people that slavery was a bad thing. He was also an incredibly intelligent man, um, so well-spoken, um, such a great vocabulary that 
some people would make the argument that slavery was okay because slaves didn't have the capacity to do anything else they weren't able to. Well, Frederick Douglass was a living counter argument to the whole idea that slaves couldn't learn because he was clearly one of the more intelligent, well-spoken people in the country. The final abolitionist that we'll be talking about is a woman named Harriet Beecher Stowe. She was a housewife, just a simple woman from Connecticut that was a writer, and she was born into an abolitionist family, so her parents and the rest of her family was active in trying to end slavery. When she was you know, an adult woman, a housewife in Connecticut, she decided she was going to write a book about slavery called Uncle Tom's Cabin. And basically, the reason why Uncle Tom's Cabin is so brilliant is because she uses slaves as main characters. And behind these slaves, there's human emotions, and there's dialogue, and there's tears, and there's all these emotional things that happen to the slaves. So when the slaves are the main characters in the book, the pe person reading the book can really feel um, the terror and all the heartbreak that it is to be a slave. So because of her putting the slaves as real people, her book just sells like wildfire. International bestseller, the second best-selling book in the 1800s to the Bible. That's how widely sold Uncle Tom's Cabin is. And it really ignited the flame about slavery. People read the book, they got upset, either against slavery or upset at Stowe for writing something if you were a Southerner. And Lincoln was actually called Harriet Beecher Stowe, the little woman that started the Civil War, because her book was that influential about getting people riled up about slavery. So in conclusion, at the beginning of the 1800s, very few people in the United States actively tried to stop slavery. It really was just part of life. No one really talked about it. But as the 1800s went on, a group of people called the abolitionists, they began actively protesting slavery, and I told you about four of them. By the mid-1800s, slavery was a major political issue in the United States that was dividing the country. And the attention given to the issue of slavery during the 1850s and 60s is because of the work of abolitionists. Without Garrison, Tubman, Douglas, and Harriet Beecher Stowe, people wouldn't have been talking about slavery and it wouldn't have been as big of a deal. So these people really brought slavery and the issue of slavery and trying to stop slavery out into the open and caused a lot of discussion about it. And because of that, it divided the country and slavery was eventually able to be abolished after the Civil War.